Ariana Grande is the most popular singer in the world right now. She breaks streaming records every time she drops a song, and her Instagram is at almost 150 million followers, the third biggest on the entire platform. She's famous on a level that can only be occupied by one person at a time. Today, I'm going to look at Ariana's musical background, her big break as a TV star, and a list of surprisingly tragic events that have been following her since her rise to superstardom. Let's get into it. Ariana Grande was born in Florida in 1993. Her mother is a businesswoman and her father is a graphic designer. She's been on a path towards fame since she was very young. Ariana started performing and singing when she was in elementary school, and her first big public performance was at just eight years old when she sang the Star Spangled Banner for a Florida Panthers game. She also went to private school and acted in various plays with the Fort Lauderdale Children's Theater. In 2008, Ariana was cast in a Broadway musical called 13. At just 15 years old, she left high school and went to New York. She was in the musical for over 100 performances. After the show closed, Ariana's career only continued to grow. She was cast as a supporting character in an upcoming Nickelodeon show called Victorious. The show would become extremely popular, and thanks to its massive audience, Ariana became a household name, alongside people like Miranda Cosgrove and Miley Cyrus. Like many of her Nickelodeon co-stars, Ariana decided to supplement her successful TV career with vocal coaching. Her first song, called Put Your Hearts Up, came out in 2011. She started working on her first album while still filming Victorious, and when the show ended in 2013, Ariana finally released her debut record. She also started filming a Victorious spin-off called Sam and Cat. And while many of her peers from Nickelodeon, like Miranda Cosgrove and Victoria Justice, would try to start their own musical careers, Ariana's music was something else. Yours Truly debuted at number one on the Billboard 200, and it would go on to reach platinum status. In just a few short years, Ariana went from a kid with a passion for theater to an international pop music and television star. Ariana's fame only continued to grow while she was writing and recording her next record. She briefly joined Justin Bieber on his Believe tour, and she performed at the White House twice in 2014. She was becoming one of the biggest names in pop music, and as her Nickelodeon series was beginning to wind down, she was finally free to explore more adult themes in her music. Ariana's second album, My Everything, was released to critical acclaim in the pop music community. It saw her taking more chances, collaborating with a mature cast of rappers, and adopting a more confident, mature voice and personality. She presented more nuanced instrumentals as well, drawing from hip-hop, EDM, and singer-songwriter styles to create a diverse yet cohesive R&B-flavored record. My Everything debuted at number one on the Billboard 200, her second number one album in a row. She got features from Iggy Azalea, Childish Gambino, The Weeknd, Zedd, Big Sean, and others. Ariana's second album was her first significant departure from her roots as a teen starlet trained in the realm of theater. Ariana's third album presented yet another transformation in her image as an artist. She changed up her look, abandoning her standard cat ears for a more suggestive pair of latex bunny ears. The album explores rock and hip-hop styles, while also paying homage to house music and reggae pop. Ariana was maturing into her voice. Having always been an incredibly talented vocalist, she was finally developing the presence to fully take advantage of it. Features on Dangerous Woman include Nicki Minaj, Lil Wayne, Future, and Macy Gray. The album was noticeably more confident than anything she had made before, and while it failed to reach number one on the Billboard 200, because Drake released views in the same week, it sold just as well as anything she had put out previously, going platinum in the US with ease. Dangerous Woman was nominated for a Grammy, and it was supported by a worldwide tour that was intended to last for seven months. On May 22nd, 2017, after Ariana's concert in Manchester, United Kingdom, an Islamic terrorist detonated a homemade bomb as people were leaving the venue. He killed 23 people and injured 140. Almost half of the people killed were under the age of 20. Out of 140 hospitalizations, 80 were children. 
Following the bombing, Ariana was able to raise millions of dollars with a number of musicians thanks to a benefit concert in Manchester. Despite the trauma Ariana suffered from the bombing, she made the decision to continue her tour. Her photographer later talked about how she didn't want to live in fear or give in to terrorism, and so she felt that the tour must go on. He called her brave and talked about how another artist might not have done the same in the face of danger. The tour was completed in September 2017. It earned over $71 million and sold almost 1 million tickets. Ariana had been working on her fourth album, Sweetener, for a while preceding the Dangerous Woman tour, but the events of the bombing in Manchester gave her a desire to start over on the record. Pharrell Williams produced most of the album and gave it a much more trap-inspired feel than Ariana's previous work. But Sweetener's release was huge. Ariana had just ended her two-year relationship to Mac Miller due to his substance abuse problems, and she had started another relationship just days later with SNL comedian Pete Davidson. Her relationship with Pete Davidson was heavily publicized, and when they got engaged after just a month of dating, the pop music community went crazy. What looked to everyone else like a rebound relationship just kept getting more and more serious, as they got matching tattoos, and Ariana even teased that there would be a song called Pete Davidson on her new album. Everything seemed to be going great, but because of Ariana's breakup with Mac Miller, because of the stress and trauma of the Manchester bombing, a lot of people expected her relationship with Pete to fall apart unceremoniously. Their relationship continued to look more like a manic rebound rather than sudden true love. And when Sweetener dropped, it sold 250,000 units in its first week. The album had the biggest first streaming week for any female artist ever, with over 125 million streams. Ariana's ex, Mac Miller, was found dead of a drug overdose just three weeks after the release of Sweetener. Within a few weeks, she and Pete Davidson confirmed that they were breaking up and calling off their wedding plans. They covered their tattoos and awkwardly moved on. Ariana needed time to process the events of the last few years, and being with Pete didn't let her do that properly. Ariana's first song after the breakup with Pete came out just a few days after they broke up. The song called Thank You Next had the biggest first 24 hours of all time for a music video on YouTube. Thank You Next debuted at number one on the Billboard Hot 100. It currently sits at almost 500 million plays on Spotify, and it's only been out for two months. The song dives into Ariana's love life, discussing her exes and the lessons she learned from them individually. Her next song, Seven Rings, would debut at number one again. It's a self-assured, heavily trap-inspired friendship anthem praising wealth and shopping. Ariana's next album will be out on February 8th. It's going to be called Thank You, Next, and so far it seems to be going in a much different direction than Sweetener, which only came out six months ago. Ariana presented a fairly benevolent, optimistic, and caring attitude on Sweetener. But the three songs we've heard so far from Thank You Next have shown a huge change in Ariana's demeanor. The new songs showcase a side of the pop star that has clearly been through a lot in the last couple of years. She needs to take care of her own needs before she can worry about anyone else. And so far, she seems to be doing a great job. Ariana has proved herself to be a resilient young woman, but at this point, it's time for her to take care of herself rather than withstand any more trouble. She tweeted on New Year's Day that she wouldn't be dating in 2019, a statement perfectly in line with the message of her smash single, Thank You Next. Ariana's road to recovery from the stressful events of the last few years will undoubtedly lead to better, more fully realized music in the future. Ariana Grande continues to exceed her expected lifespan as a celebrity. Where most of her peers from Nickelodeon released a few singles or an album and then fell into obscurity, she was able to turn her brief acting career into two number one albums, completely shedding her image as a teen actor, with her third release, Dangerous Woman. Her fourth album, Sweetener, was empowered and kind. The darker, more jaded version of Ariana that we're about to hear will be interesting to say the least. Ariana's vocals are the absolute best in the industry, and she continues to experiment with her music while keeping it accessible for a mainstream audience. It's not easy to stay relevant as a pop star for over six years, let alone still be growing in popularity on the eve of your fifth album. We might know a lot about Ariana's love life, 
but I have a feeling that the full extent of her talent and creativity is as of yet unrevealed. Hey everyone, I just want to give a quick thank you to Cyberbro Vibes for making this video possible. If you want to see more like it, go to youtube.com slash Volksgeist and subscribe. Thank you very much.